Hey everyone. I know last video we talked about um, cleaning Beto buckets, so I thought I'd do that today for you. Now last year, Doug had a really handy dandy setup for me where he had the power washer hooked up and I was able to hold the Beto buckets and use the power washer and move them around and try to get everything cleaned out. The only bad thing about that is I got totally soaked. I had to wear a raincoat the whole time and it kind of, to me, added an extra step. So this year I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wash everything here in my sink. So here's my motivation to get the beto buckets done. This is my tomato plants. These are Rybolski, that's the cultivar. Got them from Johnny's Seeds. There's about 50 of them here. I want to do about 80 plants, and so I ordered some more seeds, and they're over at Devon's house. So once I pick them up, I'll get those started also. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go from this nasty, dirty beto bucket, which was actually stored outside for a while, so it's a little bit dirtier than when it was pulled out of the greenhouse, go from that down to a nice, clean, sanitized Beto bucket. So my Beto buckets here are seven years old and every year I wash them out and reuse them. Okay, so what you want to do with the Beto buckets is make sure you get almost all the, you know, all the perlite everything out of there that you can. And you want to really make sure you clean the inside and the outside because you can notice they have little grooves and little crevices here and there and you can see there's all kinds of things in there and you know there could be some eggs in there from white flies or aphids or who knows what. So you want to make sure you get everything nice and clean. So you got your elbows for your beto buckets. You want to make sure you get those totally clean too. What I do is I just throw them in the water for now. And then I take my bucket, dump it in the water here, and I just start scrubbing away with a, a regular brush. And like I said, you want to pay attention to all the little crevices and grooves because you want to get everything off of it. You know, it may seem like it takes a long time to do this, but in the long run, it's well worth it. You have a sanitized, clean Beto bucket to work with. Just this is the way I do it. I do the outside first, and then I go and do the insides. Go around and keep turning it till you get every side clean. So I've scrubbed it out with my larger scrub brush and you can see there's still some nooks and crannies that have some algae in there. So I use a handy dandy toothbrush and start scrubbing out the little areas. So now I'm rinsing it, getting all the soap off. And you also have to pay attention to the outside. Make sure all the debris and everything comes out of all these little lips and everything in here. Because you can see, I don't know if you can see in the thing right there, there's a bunch of stuff in there. I'm not sure what that is, so I want to make sure I get it out of there. Okay, so here's my clean bucket. I have all the debris out and everything scrubbed, but you can still see there's some stains in there. And all the other buckets I've washed were the same way. So I disinfect them and kill or get rid of all the stains with a light bleach solution. And after about five minutes, all those stains will be completely gone. And the bucket will be sanitized. And I do top inside and out. And that one's all done. Now here's all the elbows for the beta buckets I've washed here and, and uh, pulled them out. I still have to get a little bottle brush so I can go in each one of these and get all the debris out and all the roots and then soak them in a light bleach solution and these will be sanitized and ready to go too.
So here's more plants for the betel buckets. I have some cucumbers here. These are English type. I got some different bell peppers here. I got the red, the orange, and the yellow bell peppers. And here's some other cucumbers. These are the new Asian ones I've been growing that have a really nice cucumber flavor. And then I also have some uh, lettuce plants started for the family. Here's some romaine lettuce I planted for Doug. It's always amazing how different the heads grow in the winter time with the low light and shorter days. But they still are pretty tasty and make a nice salad. So here's my mini Swiss chard. This is going next week to my CSA. Last week I was worried it wouldn't make it and we got a couple sunny days and boom, it went crazy and it's gonna be nice and big and ready to harvest. So here's my winter spinach. We've harvested off of here three or four times. It's still going pretty well for us, so um, I anticipate it going for another month or so. Here are my beet greens. These are for the CSA program. I'm going to harvest this in a couple weeks for them. It's always a nice addition to a winter salad. So here's my uh, leaf broccoli. You can see it's really growing. We've had a couple nice sunny days. I'm taking a look at it here, and I'm not sure who got in here, but we got some kind of rogue plant. It kind of looks like a tatsoi to me. So I put out some yellow sticky tabs uh, the other day. After I deep clean, I want to make sure everything stays clean, and I want to keep up on my pest scouting and make sure nobody gets in here and ruins anything for me again.